Hey guys, in this video, I want to go straight into technical analysis, take a look at the charts, the SPY, the NASDAQ. We'll look at the big names in the stock market, Bitcoin, Ethereum, a bunch of other really cool charts. You're not going to want to miss it. Alright guys, so welcome back to the video. It's me, Adam, and you're now looking at the SPY, the S&P 500, on the daily time frame. And this one has been just ripping on higher. A very violent move toward the upside, again, ever since the lows back in the middle of June. An aggressive move because, again, if you take a look at the 4-hour time frame, there are a lot of gaps. And they're pretty big gaps, and they go all the way back down to the low. However, 1, 2, 3, 4... However, there's also a lot of good reason, a lot of other statistics that back up that this could be the bottom, but are we going to have a pullback and then make another higher low and higher high? That remains to be seen. Something's eventually got to give, but for now, just ride the wave toward the upside and see what happens from there, see where we get rejected, and then we can make further projections. However, keep in mind, those gaps do exist. Still below the 200 simple moving day average, looking at this downtrend connecting the two previous peaks back from January and back from March is that we still haven't broken that trend. However, when we take a look at the NASDAQ, it looks like we are breaking that trend. Still below the 200 simple moving day average, though on the four hour time frame, the gaps also exist, one over here, two. So just something to keep in mind. And if we take a look at the NASDAQ relative to the S&P 500, definitely technology has been outperforming of late. That's also backed up by the XLK to RSP, XLK being the information technology ETF, Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia and such and then RSP being the S&P 500 equally weighted, so all uh, the sectors equally weighted. And so technology has definitely been outperforming the other sectors since the end of May. Another pretty telling chart is XLY to XLP, XLY being consumer discretionary, XLP being uh, consumer defensive, and uh, I look at this as a risk on, risk off gauge. And it looks like risk on is holding on uh, above that previous resistance, which could become the new support line. And another one actually is the IWM to the S&P 500, and actually this one just recently got back above its 200 simple moving day average. And the reason I want to look at the IWM, which is the Russell 2000, and again, I had a bunch of lines from a long time ago. We can get rid of a bunch of these. Uh, this one still remains a pretty uh, big overhead resistance, around $210. Right up against and actually a little bit above that 200 simple moving day average. And the reason, again, the IWM is important is because, because if this rally is for real and all that breadth is coming in, uh, all stocks are moving up together. Unprofitable smaller companies, again, if that risk on enters the market, could outperform. Something I actually learned this week, the breadth thrust, a broad range of the market moving up together, not just one sector or the big cap companies move. Breadth thrust is when this chart over here goes below 10 into oversold territory and then quickly moves into overbought territory above 90. It's official and when you take a look at the monthly, uh, when we hit these oversold territories and then we ripped on higher above 90, the market had actually bottomed 100% of the time after that occurred. The air has come out of the volatility index. And we hit that high back in June at 35. Uh, now that we are below 20, we do have to be cautious as the past few times that we were at 20. Uh, that's when we saw spikes up. And not to mention since October, November of last year, uh, the VIX had been swelling up and we finally broke that trend. Over the past couple of weeks, similar with the VXN, this is the volatility of the NASDAQ 100 swelling up since November when it had peaked. We've now broken trend as well. Hitting highs of just below 45, we're currently just at 25. Bitcoin, not too much to report. This one has been following our channel pretty nicely for the time being. Uh, nothing too much to report until it breaks trend or does something exciting. Ethereum uh, has been outperforming Bitcoin. This one also behaving between our lines for the time being. We've seen a pretty nice rally into gold, but now we're hitting resistance of about 1800. So oil recovering a little bit from a low of $88, bouncing to about $94, however, for the time being, is respecting this downtrend and currently uh, at around $91 per barrel. And now looking at the biggest stock, so Apple, this one is on a rip rally since the lows back in the middle of June. Honestly, from $130 to $170 is a crazy rally in, what, six, seven weeks? Rising above that 200 simple moving day average over the past couple of weeks, however, leaving this gap, but it's back into our long-term wedge. AMD looking pretty strong from the lows at around $70. I'm trying to push back into this channel between $100 and let's say $125. If we can find buying pressure and support at $100, that next level we're looking at would probably be around 110 
Amazon, this one leaving a huge gap after earnings, pushing up right against that 200 simple moving day average. I do one would expect with all the gaps that we're seeing that they are eventually going to fill. And if we do see some kind of pullback with Amazon, I would look at this blue trend line to see uh, some kind of buying opportunity. Alphabet Google stock trying to push out of the range above $120, leaving behind a little bit of a gap itself. Uh, below $110, even potentially filling in this gap could be a great buying opportunity as well. If we do break out of 120 look for 122 and then 125 as, as potential resistances. We take Microsoft also leaving a little bit of a gap. However, we broke this downturn and that's huge for the stock market. We're approaching the 200 symbol moving day average and again, hitting a low back in June at $242 a share. Now, now hovering at $290. If we do get a pullback, I'd be taking a look at these moving averages, which would coincide uh, very nicely around 280 with, with this previous downtrend. NVIDIA, this one actually surprised uh, with preliminary results from their earnings, and they actually had a lot of bad news to say. And the stock fell from $190 all the way down to about $167 in two trading days. However, recovering right back up to $187, showing a lot of strength even on very bad news as the rest of the market rallies. Palantir stock also reporting earnings this week. The stock fell off a cliff. However, this uptrend is still very much intact for the time being. And lastly, we have Tesla stock. This one is super volatile, of course. The stock is splitting on August 25th, three to one. So post split, we're currently trading at $300 a share uh, and investors will have three times uh, the amount of shares. This one also leaving a gap right after earnings around $750 a share. So if we do, uh, pull back. So that is a key area to keep in mind. We are pushing as a 200 simple moving day average. Again, very nicely in, again, very nicely fitting our ascending wedge that we've had intact for the past couple of years. All right, and that's the end of the video. The market's been super wild. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you guys in my next video.